So question 2 slash 136. As the hydraulic cylinder rotates about O, the exposed length L of the piston rod is controlled by the action of oil pressure in the cylinder. If the cylinder rotates at the constant rate of theta dot is 60 degrees per second, and L is decreasing at the constant rate of 150 millimeters per second, calculate the magnitude of the velocity and acceleration of end B when L is equal to 125 millimeters. All right, so the first thing to do is set up your coordinate system. And the natural thing to do with this type of question is to use the polar one, um, simply because it's really well suited to a situation where you have something that's capable of extending and retracting, um, as well as rotating about, um, in this case, point O. So when we set it up, what we want to do is put the R direction in the direction of the extension or retraction. So in this case, it's going to be along the B. So that's the R direction. Theta is then 90 degrees to that. So I'll put it here. All right, so the next thing we need to do is uh, write out all the different um, variables that are going to go into the velocity and acceleration expressions. And in the polar form, they are theta, theta dot, theta double dot, and then r, r dot, r double dot. So going through the information that we're given in the question, um, the first thing we're told is that the cylinder rotates at a constant rate of the uh, 60 sorry, degrees per second. So that means that theta dot is 60 degrees per second, and we can infer what theta double dot is. Um, if it's at a constant velocity, it's going to have a zero acceleration. So theta double dot is zero. So the next things um, all relate to the length. So in this case, we'll write it all down. So we're told that we're interested in a situation where the length is 125 millimeters. Um, we're also told that L is incre sorry, decreasing at a constant rate of 150 millimeters per second. So L dot, if it's decreasing, it's going to be moving back toward the origin, getting smaller. So it's going to be negative uh, 150. And if it's at a constant um, decreasing rate, that means that the acceleration is also zero in this case. So we need to convert these lengths um, into the r, r dot and r double dot. So it's pretty easy for these last two. Um, we're interested in point B out here um, at the end. So the, it, the um, r dot and r double dot is going to be equal to L dot and L double dot, um, respectively, just because this point is only able to move um, at the same rate as this L variable is able to move. So this becomes R dot, this becomes R double dot. The only one that needs to change is this one here. We need to create it um, in terms of R. So R is going to be the position um, relative back to your origin. So it's going to be 0. Uh, sorry, 375 millimeters plus the length L. Okay, so working that out, um, you find that your radius is equal to 500 um, millim millimeters. Alrighty, let's move that back in case it didn't quite get in the frame. So, now we can go ahead and use our equations in polar form for velocity and acceleration. So I'll just scroll it down slightly. So the velocity is equal to r dot er plus r theta dot e theta. So we're able to just substitute straight in. So we know that r dot is negative 150. Um, R is equal to 500 and theta dot is equal to 60 degrees per second. Now this needs to be converted into radians because radians are the natural numbers. Um, degrees are not. If you don't convert it into radians, you're going to get an odd answer that's not right. So to convert, it just becomes 60 pi on 180 multiplied by pi on 180. Alright, so we can simplify this down. 
Um, and it becomes this here. And because our lengths were in millimeters, um, the velocities are down in millimeters per second. So next up is the acceleration. And it has this following form. And again, we just need to substitute straight in, um, remembering that your theta dot needs to be converted into radians per second. We would also need to convert theta double dot, except that it's zero, so obviously it's the same no matter what units you're in. Okay, so we can put this in a calculator and work out the final answers for vector form anyway. Oops. So that's 314. Um, they're in millimetres again because um, our lengths were originally in millimetres. So the final part of the question, if I just scroll back up, um, asks us to cal calculate the magnitude of the velocity and acceleration. And at the moment all we've got is the vector forms. So we just need to convert it. So for the velocity, if we want to find the magnitude, just need to take both of our components them and then take the overall square root and this comes out to be uh, 544 millimeters per second and for acceleration um, it comes out to be 632 millimeters per second squared. So they're the final answers to this question. So that's all there is. Um, see you in the next one.